What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon11970, and I thank you so much for taking the time for what is probably going to be a very long but very beneficial video. It is my hopes to help steer people in the right direction and finding out what's going on in this government and what's happening through most governments throughout the world by giving some history, which will connect dots, which will explain a lot of things. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, and you're going to see it most likely by the view counts. You're going to see it very doctored. You're going to see lots of thumbs down from these things. It's because they are, there are people that have goals to keep this information silent. So all I'm asking is if you take the time, and you're here for the right reasons, and you take the time to examine what I talk about, and I'm going to be using the Constitution, I'm going to be using Black's Law Dictionaries, legal definitions to explain a lot of this some of the stuff i'm going to leave for you to figure out for yourself because my job isn't to just point everything out the idea is for us to become independent and be able to find things ourselves because if we rely solely on one person or a group of people to find or do everything for us is it any wonder why we're all in the mess that we're in and this is why governments give away so much free stuff because if you notice, the, the people who get that free stuff are the majority of the people. Those are the people they want to make sure that they're not picking up their torches and pitchforks and trying to start a revolution. So if you give them free things and you tell them that you'll provide for them and take care of them, well, you have the majority of people on their side. So there's a method to these madnesses. Being a slave, no matter if you're a bottom slave or a top slave, you're still a slave. And somebody made a comment to me earlier in one of my other videos saying, well, you know, if I'm going to be a slave, I might as well be at the highest level slave. I can understand that, but you're still property. You could still be discarded. And I'll give you a prime example. How many of you back in 1993 or 1995 bought the top of the line cell phone? How many of you still use it? How many of you bought the top of the line computer? How many of you still even own it? What you eventually do is, when something better comes along, even the best things get replaced. So keep that in mind. Those who sell out for some fiat currency to look the other way. Now, I'm not saying if you're earning a living and trying to survive and you're using what little money you can to not starve to death, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I'm talking about the people that are willing to allow countries to be destroyed a group of people to be murdered, for homes to be stolen, and your money being stolen from countries, and allowing not only progress to be kept away, but to force old systems down our throats using fear and the fact that we don't take responsibility. So if you don't like being responsible, then this video is not going to be for you because I'm not going to be here giving you all the answers. I'm going to show you the path of the road and I need you to travel it because what they want is they want you to wait for Superman. They want you to wait for Batman. They want you to wait for Wolverine and Captain America. They want you to wait for Clint Eastwood. Those people do not exist, not in the way you think they are, and it's not their job to save you. It's your job. So if you're here to finally learn what's going on, and learn what needs to be done to get out of it. I'm going to be giving you a lot of information here today. So what I'm going to ask before I start this is if you appreciate that, I'm going to need all the help I can get because YouTube is going to hide my numbers. They're going to allow trolls to discredit me, send a bunch of personal attacks instead of them attacking the information. Um, there are going to be numerous thumbs down from people who didn't genuinely watch it and just didn't like it. They just thumb it down because it's either funny for them or it keeps this from being shown. So if you appreciate this, and I'm not saying just thumb it up right now. What I'm saying is if after you watch this video, and it's going to be long, but it's going to be worth it. If you, after watching this video, think this is good information, this is helpful information, this is information people need, then I'm going to ask you as a personal favor from my hard work for you to please share it, thumb it up, favor it, Post it on your social media outlets because this information is being hidden. And as you can see, I'm not afraid to show who I am. I am not afraid to put myself out there. 
So the only thing I'm asking for you guys is not to just watch it and then just get the information for yourself. I'm asking you to help me pass this along as a personal favor. So with that being said, let's start getting into the history. Now, there's so much history, obviously. I don't know everything, and there's no sense of talking about everything. So we're going to hit certain points. Now, again, I'm not going to hit everything, so please don't chastise me for what I leave out. Appreciate what I'm putting in, because it's going to put a lot of things in a bigger picture, and then you can expand it from there. So let's get into it. We're going to go back to the date is not irrelevant. So let's just say it's around the 13th, 14th century. I could be wrong, but again, the timing has no relevance to this. So bear that in mind if I get the timing wrong. Before around that time, countries like Rome, Greece, uh, all different nations, when they wanted to go to war, they had to base it on the wealth that their country had. In other words, their whatever they could sell, whether it be spices like in Asia or gold and silver or whatever natural resources they had, lumber, whatever, they had to, whatever they could come up with to be able to create a war because wars cost money. You have to pay for soldiers. They have to be fed. They have to be sheltered. They have to have armor. They have to have horses. They have to have equipment. This is things that cost money. Now, before a certain period of time ago, money was not paper dollars. It was gold and silver coins or even bronze coins. It was real money. That had to be extracted from the earth, processed, and created, which meant a country was limited by their resources. So if they wanted to go to war, the only way they could get more resources was to conquer somebody else, take their resources, and add it to theirs and expand. That's what countries like Rome did. They started out with their wealth, created armies, and created a banded system that could get all these little villages here and there, overtake them, and steal their wealth, and join, have them join into their community. This went on for thousands of years. Everything was based on the fact of a war was created based on the resources you had to be able to create an army. So if you didn't have a lot of resources, you were never going to have an army strong enough to stop somebody else from stealing your wealth. So let's go to around the 13th or 14th century. King of England. King of England, people always wonder why England, this small little country with not a lot of natural resources, because they don't have oil. And as far as I know, they don't have a lot of gold and silver. They don't have a lot of mines. And they can't grow a lot of food. That's why you heard about, like in Ireland especially, the potato famines. That country and that area around the world does not have a lot of resources. I'm not saying they don't have any, but they definitely are not the wealthiest nation as far as resources are concerned. So, so many people ask throughout history, why did that country get so powerful that it pretty much took over not only most of Europe, but one of, it was one of the sm only countries that pretty much helped stop the Roman Empire. They stopped at England. They worked with them, but they couldn't overthrow them. Now, basically what happens is, you know how they say you'll hear all the time from people, even if you don't know all this information, how um, banks rule the world? Well, think about the concept of a bank from your own perspective. If you borrow money from a bank, you have to have a mortgage, which means, which is actually a mortgage is a death pledge. Go figure. You have to look up English language. When you get a mortgage or a death pledge, what's happening is, is they're saying to you, in a nutshell, although they're not telling you this, we're going to give you a bunch of made-up fiat money, fake money, that doesn't exist, because they're not giving you... If you have a, a house that's $100,000, and you say, I need a $100,000 loan to buy a house, they're not going to say, okay, one, two, three. They're not giving you money. They write a check, or they enter it in your computer. In other words, they give you nothing. And then you're expected to pay back in real money, which means you have to work to develop that money to create the paper dollars or the digital numbers that you place into your account because unlike them you can't just type numbers into an account you have to earn it through your work through your slavery to create enough money to pay back that loan plus interest and if you don't well what do they do they foreclose on your house in other words they take your property and now are the owners of it 
Well, the difference between us and governments is that governments use countries as collateral. And when you can't pay back the debt, the banks ultimately foreclose on it and they take them over. So in a nutshell, and I'm, I'm only giving the bare minimum information, you're going to need to do more research on this. But at one certain point, and again, the date is irrelevant, the King of England was approached by the Bank of England, the Rothschilds, or it could be another bank. I'm not sure. It's, again, irrelevant. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But it's still a bank approached the king. And for the first time in history, they made an agreement with that king. And they said, we are going to be able to extend you credit so you can have your war. Because remember what I said, wars cost money. So you were limited to your resources. So for the first time in history, England was given the power of credit to be able to build ships, to be able to buy an army, to be able to buy the best equipment, to be able to get the best weapons. And they literally, over decades, if not a few centuries, controlled almost all of Europe and beyond. Because they were the only country that was basing their wars on credit. And if you know anything about wars, wars cost money. And who lends out that money? Banks. So the King of England was thrilled at this opportunity. Just imagine if you were the King of England and somebody approached you and said, well, I know throughout history you normally needed whatever resources you could to be able to create your army, which limited the amount of power you could actually have. I'm going to give you credit which means you will have an unlimited supply of finances to back up as much of an army as you want to create. And all you have to do is pay me back. If you were that king, you would think, wow, that's a great idea. Now I could take over all these different countries, all these different resources. I'll become rich beyond my wildest dreams. So they agreed. It's always a catch to every story. And what they don't tell you is, is not only did he get that money, he had to pay it back plus interest. Now, if you know anything about how money is created, and if you don't, this is going to be a very eye-opening statement for you. Banks, like the Federal Reserve, or banks throughout the world, when they create what they call money, which is not money because it's not backed by anything other than your labor, when they create this currency, that's the real thing, it's a currency, but most people understand it as money because that's what we're told. But when they create that currency, that they loan out to people. They only create the principal. Now, what is the principal? Let's say there are only a million dollars in existence in the world. And one person goes to the bank and says, I want to borrow $1 million. So he takes a loan out for $1 million. Well, that's the principal. That's the amount that you borrowed. Now, if there's only a million dollars in existence and you are one, the one person who borrows that $1 million, well, if you know anything about loans, you have to pay back the principal, which is the one million, plus interest. So if you've taken all of the money in existence and you're the one person who took all of that money and borrowed it and had to pay it back plus interest, where is the interest coming from? It doesn't exist. The only way you could pay back the interest is by borrowing more money or more currency. So they create more money to pay off that initial amount of principal plus interest. But now the interest is even higher. And again, you have to go up and borrow more, up and borrow more, up and borrow more. And they have to create more and more and more. That's why you see deficits throughout the countries. They are very good at making theft seem normal. So that's why in the United States Corporation, and we're going to get into that, why I say it's a corporation, they have made Ponzi schemes legal. And you see the deficit that we have. It's nothing more than creating the principal amount, them borrowing it, which levels out, and we have to pay it back plus interest that doesn't exist until they print more currency. So, getting back to the King of England. After a while, eventually the banks approach him and say, we need our money. And he could have paid back 100% of what he borrowed, but he would still owe the interest. Now, remember when I talked about earlier, when if you own a house 
well, if you don't know how things really work, I'm talking about the average people in the real world, that if you don't pay for your mortgage and you don't know the real laws to protect yourself, well, what do they do? They take your property. They foreclose on it and they take your property. Well, that's what the Bank of England or whatever bank it was, because again, it's irrelevant. That's what the banks did. They ended up taking the king's land as collateral. And what they did was they said to the king, and I don't know if they said it specifically, I wasn't there, but I'm paraphrasing, obviously, that basically they said, we're going to keep you in power, but you're not really in power. You're just going to be a facade. You're going to be a showpiece. That's why you see in England, the queen has no power on other, other than unofficial status. It's the banks who own England that own the property because they could not pay back a debt. And the reason they couldn't pay back a debt is because they only create the principal amount and you owe the interest. If you can't, you could pay it back all 100% of that principal. If you don't pay the interest, you have not fulfilled your obligation in that contract and they can still foreclose. That's what they did. So they, they said to the king, we're going to let you keep your illusion of your power. You're, we're going to hide behind the scenes, but you're going to do what we tell you. And you're never going to tell anybody about it. Because if you do, you will no longer be alive to tell anything else. So if you were the king, let's say you were the king of England at that time. And you owed whatever amount of money that you could knew you could not repay. And they said, either you can lose everything and we kill you or you lose all your power and you lose everything. Or we'll take your country and its possessions, which includes your subjects, your people. But we'll still give you the illusion of power. What would you do? Well, obviously, most kings tended to be very greedy and they wanted a lot of power. So if they said, well, I don't have to pay back this debt and they're allowing me to keep my power. They're letting me keep my, my birthright. And all I have to do is sacrifice people I don't know and don't care about. Where do I sign? And just remember this sin in the word sign. There's also curse and cursive and spell and spelling. But that's for another video. So that began the control of the British Empire. Get to the Americas, which at the one time was part of, and probably still is, part of the British colony. We tried to break away from them. And again, I'm paraphrasing, going through just little things that are relevant. We once were called the Union States of America. These states, the original 13 colonies, were considered different countries and that's why if you went for example from virginia to new york they would have virginia money new york money and people who traveled from state to state would always have to have different types of currency and it would make it very inconvenient there would be different laws in different places it's like going from germany to china to england to france to italy to egypt it's all different countries that's what the original colonies were. They may not have called themselves individual countries, but they were states on their own. And to make things out of convenience, which people love to entrap people through convenience, is they became the Unionized States of America, or the United States of America. Because remember, this country is not called the United States. It's America. That's why there's North America, and South America, but we're going to get into that later. So, as we started to build, and we started owing more and more tribute to our master, the King of England, who was owed money to the banks, which are ultimately controlled by the Vatican. Again, we'll get into that later. We eventually realized that we need to have our own independence, and we tried to overthrow them. That costs money. We supposedly broke free. We wrote an original constitution. Now, we're going to get into the fact that there are actually two constitutions, the one that you think you know and the one you don't know about. Now, here's something you may not know about any kind of contract. A contract is only valid for the people that sign it. So, in other words, if I'm about to sell you a car and I write a contract and I say, I, the seller, sell you, John Doe, a 1967 Pinto, I sign it as the seller, you sign it as the buyer. That is now a formal contract. 
a third party can't come in and say, oh, wait, I'm going to buy that car. It's mine. Well, he's not on the contract. So it doesn't matter what that person says. His signature is not on that contract, which means he is not part of it. Even if the friend says it's okay. Because in law, a contract is between a certain amount of parties who are placing the signatures on that contract. Well, believe it or not, the people who signed the original Constitution are who that document's for. They may convince you that it's for we the people. They may have tricked you into being thought that that document is for everybody. But like any contract in any law, ask any contract lawyer, only the people that sign a contract are in the contract or involved in the contract. That's all that was. So there's a big lie you may want to research. The, even if there was only one original constitution and nothing else that I'm going to talk about has changed, which makes it basically irrelevant at this point, but even if there was just the original constitution, the people who signed it are the ones that contract is for. Because that's ultimately what it is. Four corners create the contract. Anything written inside, unless it's boxed off, which is another thing you may want to check into when you sign a check or sign a mortgage. When you have something boxed out in a contract, it is like it doesn't exist. So the next time you're ready to sign a mortgage and they tell you, sign here, please, and they mark an X where to sign, you might want to check because, first of all, that X is actually the signature. You ever hear of X marks the spot? So when you're signing, sin and sign, and using your cursive or curse writing, you are actually putting it in a box, which in law, anything that's boxed out in a contract, the lawyer or the judge cannot use admissible in evidence because it's like it does not exist. It's called the four corners rule. They don't teach you that in school. So let's fast forward about 100 years to the Civil War. Now, we're led to believe that the Civil War was done for slavery. That might have been part of it, but that was not the only reason. What it is, they use slavery as justification to create new parts of a new constitution and rewrote the 13th Amendment. Because the 13th Amendment that they have now is not what it used to be. I don't know what the original is, and I don't really care because it's irrelevant at this point, so that's why I'm not going to get into that. If you know it, you could post it or make your own video. So, like I said earlier in this video, wars cost money. The Civil War created a lot of damage. It cost a lot of money. President Lincoln, to try and win the war for the Union, because remember, it was originally called the Union States. That's why the Confederates were trying to secede from the Union. It's not what you think it was. It wasn't about slavery. It had a part to it. And I'm not saying slavery is right. I'm not saying it's not justified and it shouldn't have been stopped. But what I'm saying is they took advantage like they always do. They take advantage of a situation if it follows or meets their, their agenda. So President Lincoln, to be able to finance the war, had to devalue the price of the U.S. greenback. And they reduced the price of gold, which devalued the currency by about 40 percent so they could print more. Sound familiar? Well, one of the regrets that uh, Abraham Lincoln was actually admitted to have was the fact that he, it was a necessary evil. He had to devalue the currency to be able to pay for the war. And when he wanted to put it back, he coincidentally, I'm sure, was assassinated. Hmm, wonder who could have done that. Could be part of that mafia called the government and the banking system. But then again, I wasn't there, so who knows? sure it was just a coincidence so this is what happened on february 21st 1871 the 41st congress was presented an offer they couldn't refuse and i'm going to put it in a perspective that will make sense like i said wars cost money civil war cost them god knows how many millions of dollars and back then that's a lot of money the country was about to go bankrupt. And in steps in, dun, da, 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 the Bank of England, which, as far as I know, one of the principal owners of the Bank of England is the Rothschild family. If you are watching things like Alex Jones and all these other truther channels, you're going to have that name very familiar. 
He was one of, if not the, principal owner of the Bank of England. They go to the 41st Congress and, and say, like, they're heroes. And again, I'm paraphrasing because I wasn't there. But they basically said in a nutshell, we're going to keep you from having your country go bankrupt. We will provide you with all the money you need. But we only want one little favor in return. So they say. Now, just imagine if you were part of the 41st Congress, which could have been responsible for your country going bankrupt and heaven for God knows what would have happened. And you had the opportunity and somebody came along and said, I'm going to save you. I'm going to keep your country from going bankrupt and make you look like the worst Congress in the history of your country. Wouldn't you want to listen? You probably did. So the Congress might have thought at the time they were doing good. It's the old thing called drowning in good intention. So, this is what the banks basically said to them in a nutshell. We're going to give you all the money you need to pay for all the war, to rebuild your society, build your nation again, and become nice and powerful, too. Maybe even throw you a little extra on the side. And all of you congressmen and politicians, you're going to be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. All we want in return, not only you having to pay us back, plus interest. Now, remember, they only ever create the principles. So this is where they hook you in. You know, they say all we want in return is about a 10 to 20 square mile little area, little tiny piece of your country. And they created the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. So, again, just imagine if you're one of the 41st congressmen and your country is about to go bankrupt because the war just costs more than you can afford for the resources that you had. And somebody comes along and says, we're going to give you all the credit you need. We're going to pay back all your debts. You're going to be able to repair your country. You're going to be able to become rich beyond your wildest dreams. And all I have to give up is 20 square miles of a humongous country? That sounds too good to be true. Where do I sign? Where do I sin? So what happens? They create a country, a corporation, called... The United States. Now, when people say the corporation, the United States corporation, let me define what that means. Because some people hear that all the time, but they don't understand it because they don't know about law. Have you ever heard of the store Macy's? Now, that was created from a person named Macy's. But let's go even further because you'll be able to hear this in its entirety. Have you ever heard of the Walt Disney Company? That's a corporation, Walt Disney, or Disney as they like to call it. But the whole corporation is called Walt Disney. Well, who created that? Walt Disney. So even though you have the person here, and his name is Walt Disney, and the corporation here that is called Walt Disney, are they two in the same? No, they are separate. So even though the name is the same, you have two separate entities. You have Walt Disney, the the person, or the human, or the people, and we'll get into those definitions, and you have the corporate entity with the same name. Not the same. So when you have the continent, or the country of America, and you have the United States, people assume that's the same thing. Well, you know what happens when you assume. Hold your ears if you don't like bad words, but it makes an ass out of you and me. America, the country. The United States is nothing more than a registered corporate name that is placed in the files of the 10 to 20 square mile area of the District of Columbia that was given to a foreign country, a bank of England. They were given to the English as collateral for paying their debt to keep the America from going bankrupt due to the Civil War, which was not done by slavery. It's part of it, not the reason. It was to get people to start a war, divide and conquer. You beat your enemy by having them fight themselves. It's the oldest trick in the book. It goes back to the Bing, Ming Dynasty. So if you're a politician, you think you've won. You think you've saved your country. Here you are getting all the money that you need. You're going to be wealthy. Your fellow congressmen are going to be wealthy. And all you had to give up was this tiny little dot on a big map. And they did this deal. The Act of 1871. Look it up. But there was, there's always a catch when you deal with evil, even if you profit from it. And we're to this day suffering from that 
drowning in good intentions moment. Because here's the catch. And let's get into it with the Constitution. So if you want to argue with me, that's fine. I'm giving actual statements from the Constitution. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the 13th Amendment because I had another video. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway, just in case. And again, this is a long video. So if you have to pause it or something, please do. But this is worthwhile. The... 13th Amendment was created December 6th of 1865. They created this to be able to enslave you without you knowing it. Because for any document to hold value, like especially the document called the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, it has to be a consent, the consent of the governed. Consent can mean silence because it means you're not disagreeing. That's why cops are always telling you you have the right to me remain silent. In other words, if you're silent, we can make any crime we want. And if you're not denying it, in law, you're accepting it. So the 13th Amendment. Now again, they had a different 13th Amendment. I don't originally know what it was, nor do I care, because it's irrelevant at this time. Because that old document, even if it existed today, still would not matter because we did not sign it. But I digress. 13th Amendment, Section 1. Neither slavery... And get this, nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall be duly convicted, shall exist within the United States, or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So they didn't say America. It's all in the wording. They are saying that it sh slavery shall not exist in the United States corporation. But they don't say that, do they? They lead you to assume. That's why ignorance of the law is no excuse. And law is based on presumption. They're presuming you know it. So if you don't know it, sucks for you, doesn't it? So, let's get into this definition of slavery. They purposely wrote involuntary servitude. What that means is, is a person, a government cannot come along and just take you out of your bed in the middle of the night and force you to do hard labor. That is a legal, legal definition under the 13th Amendment. But if they can get you to volunteer then you are a legal slave by de legal definition. And it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, because law is irrelevant whether you believe in it or not or know it or not. That's why so many people get entrapped on a daily basis, because you don't know the terminology. And if you don't know the terminology, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So you might want to start checking these things. Now, there's another interesting part of that, where it says, or place subject to the jurisdiction. And this is where the corporation has grown to what we see today. Even though it originally started out as a 10 to 20 square mile radius of the District of Columbia, basically if you lived within that radius, you were automatically part of that corporation known as the United States. So they thought, well, that's a minor loss, but, you know, billions of people don't live there. Maybe a couple of thousand, maybe a couple of hundred thousand. We have millions living outside of it, so let them have that little country. We'll keep the secret. You're keeping us well paid. No one will ever know we were about to go bankrupt. Everybody wins. But here's where the, the banks tricked us and tricked them. 14th Amendment, which was created July 9th, 1868. Section 1. All persons, and we're going to look up persons in this legal dictionary. This is Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. I suggest you get one. You can buy it on eBay. 5th edition or less. Don't get the newer ones because they hide all this stuff. But we're going to get into that. Section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States. In other words, a foreign person that comes and gets their green card. Well, that's what it used to be. And subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Again, they use that word. Are citizens of the United States. They didn't say of America. They said of the United States. And of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges. Not rights, but it's a privilege. Don't you feel privileged? So let's get into this. First, let's look up the definition of person. Now, there are many definitions of the word person. In law, you can't assume. So if you don't know which one it means and you don't ask which one it means, well, they can pretty much make it any one they want. So... Make sure you ask. But let's get into it. Person. The one that we need to be concerned about is the living body of a human being. An, an entity 
such as a corporation. Hmm, wonder if I said that earlier. That is recognized by law as having most of the rights, isn't that nice, most of the rights, and duties of a human being. In this sense, the term indicates partnerships and other associations, whether incorporated or unincorporated. Let me show you it so you could see I did not make up anything that I just said. Pause it if you have to, but right here, that's where the definition is, okay? So they're telling you a, a person is a corporation. So let's look up corporation. All right, corporation, an entity having authority under law to act as a single person. See how it's going in circles? Distinct from the shareholders who own it. Ever hear of that you're owned and you have owners? Walt Disney here, the, the business. Walt Disney here, the person. This is the person. This is the corporation. So if your name, let's just say, for example, is John Doe, and you look at your license that has John Doe, that is not you, although it looks like you. That is your corporation. Starting to get the picture. So, the shareholders who own it and have issue to write and issue stock and exist identif uh, identifyingly. Uh, that the rest we don't need. But let me again show this so you can see I'm not making it up. It's right, right here. Pause it if you have to. So, a person is a corporation. A corporation is a person. They're going around in circles. Legalese. You may want to start looking at it. So, when they talk about how the citizen... Let's look up citizen. This is how they trick people, because the average person has no idea what's going on. And you're going to see the first words of this, a citizen... By legal definition, because regular definitions mean squat and law. So if you think you know what words mean and you don't know the legal definition, you're screwed. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. Tell a judge that you don't believe what their definition means and see how fast you get thrown in jail. Okay? So here we go. Citizen. A person, corporation, who by... Um, either birth or naturalization is a member of a political community owing allegiance to the community and being entitled isn't that nice to enjoy its civil rights and protections well you don't want civil rights you want your human rights and even that you want to be careful because if you look up the word human look up the word hue it means god god man pay attention so they're telling you that a person is a corporation, a corporation is a, is a corporation is a person, and citizen is also a person. Hmm, going in circles again. Black's Law Dictionary. Let's get back to the amendment. Let's read it again. All persons born or naturalized in the United States, not America, the United States, that's that corporation over here, the Walt Disney World, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state where they reside. What is jurisdiction? And what is subjects? Well, think, let's go back to the king. What does a king have? The king has his subjects. Who are the subjects? Well, that's the people. The people who are slaves to him. In other words, he takes care of them and protects them, and they provide all the work so he could sit on his throne, point some fingers on who to kill, who to imprison, and make money off of the people. If you don't do what they say, you could be abolished you can be thrown in prison you can even be executed so that's what a subject is it's a person that's following the king jurisdiction is territory now remember when i said they sold that little 10 to 20, 20 square mile radius of the district of columbia well you would think only the people that lived in that 20 to 10 to square 20 square mile radius would be affected well this is where they created the 14th Amendment, which legally defined the word citizen. They talk about subject. They talk about the United States. And this is how they entrap you. You ever have a, you have a driver's license? Do you remember when you got it, one of the questions they ask you, one of the first questions they ask you? They ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? Well, guess what? The moment you click that, you are now a citizen of the United States. 
not America the country over here, but a foreign country that was sold to us in 1871 and uh, is owned by the Bank of England, which you don't know about until now, called the United States. You're now a citizen. In other words, you're subject. You volunteered your servitude. 13th Amendment, definition of slavery, because slavery is involuntary servitude. But if you checked any box, if you've ever paid taxes and checked the box that says, are you a U.S. citizen, and you check yes, you volunteered your servitude to a corporation that is located in the District of Columbia, the corporation known as the United States. Congratulations. We are all traitors to our nation. I want you to think about that for a second. Because they don't tell you that. And in law, your silence can be identified as agreeing. And I've used this as an example. It doesn't mean it always does, but in law, if they want to determine that's what it is so they can entrap you, you're damn well sure they're going to do it to entrap you. And that's why so many people don't get away with little common crimes. And that's why if you also see in the 13th Amendment, they say neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except for punishment of a crime. In other words, if you're in prison, you're a legal slave. They could do whatever they want. You ever wonder why there's so many laws being passed that get people incarcerated? Free slave labor that way. But keep following the system. So they've expanded it and expanded it and expanded it until everyone forgot what happened in 1871, and states became franchises of the corporation. That's what states are today. State of New York, state of New Jersey, state of Hawaii. Not union states. State of. That's why you see the United States of, in little words, America. America being the continent, the United States being the corporation. They're saying the corporation of America. You're just so used to saying it, you think it's all one word. USA, United States of America. No, United States of the Americas. Two separate things separated by one little word that you think is all inclusive because your government will never tell you about it. Your schools will never tell you about it. Your media will never tell you about it. And you and your neighbors and your friends probably don't know about it until now. So, we're not going to do much more at this point because I have other videos, The Truth of the United States, America, and You, which will go into the fact that in 1933 we went bankrupt again for the final time. Well, you know what? Let's get into that a little bit because that is important. So, when we got all that money, we thought, oh, well, all our problems are solved. Well, there were some situations called World War I cost money, have to borrow money, where we had to create income taxes. Before the early 1900s, before the Federal Reserve was opened, people took home 100% of their income. may not have been a lot, but, you know, things were not as expensive as they are today because the currency was not devalued. Federal Reserve, which is a foreign-owned bank, lends us our money, or our currency. They pretend it's money. You're used to saying it's money. That's why even I slip every now and then. Old habits die hard. But in 1871, when those people, those congressmen and those senators and those politicians all thought they were doing good to save the country, all they did was keep it on life support. Because ultimately what happened in 1933, this country went for, into bankruptcy for the final time. Which, coincidentally enough, is the same year that birth certificates became legally mandatory. Also, the income tax. Very interesting. I could be mistaken on that, so please don't hate me if I get that wrong. You know, I'm just a regular person. I don't know everything, so if I get that wrong, please correct me. But, you know, save the hate for other people. I'm trying to do good. But what happened was it's also the year that they confiscated gold and made it illegal. And that's when you became a corporation. Not physically, because what is a corporation? A corporation is nothing more than a name registered with the federal government. If you've ever owned a corporation, all you're doing is incorporating the name. In law, it becomes a physical entity. It becomes a person. That's why they always tell you that if you're going to own a business, you should get it incorporated because if somebody sues, they can't sue you. They sue the company. Well, in 1933, 
and I, I have other videos that talk about the birth certificate, they've turned you into their only remaining resource, collateral. And that's why you'll always hear things like phrases, like words have hidden meanings. Like if two wealthy people are about to get married, which is nothing more than the merger of two corporations, well, what do they say? They say it's good stock. Well, remember when we were reading some of the definitions, they talked about, you know, being traded, property. And that's why when uh, somebody's bothering you, you say, leave me alone or leave me alone or mind your own business or nothing personal. It's just business. There are hidden meanings in words and words can affect you. If you don't think words can affect you, then you don't know anything about the physical nature of sound because sound is nothing more than a vibration. A vibration has different levels. Your body is made of electricity. Electricity can be manipulated by vibration. Prime example, go to a chalkboard and have somebody with very thick, long nails scratch a nice, long scratch along the chalkboard and watch people cringe. Didn't physically touch them, but yet it physically affected them. So words have meanings. And they have different vibrations, because that's all that my voice is. The only reason you can understand it, and the only reason I am saying it, is vibration is coming out, vibration is going in, and you're registering the vibration. That's all it is. It's just actual science. So when you have a different frequency that your body can handle, that's when you get sick or injured. That's why they have you can have high-pitched noises that can give you headaches. That's why if you go anywhere near, like a cell phone tower, it has that hum. Well, that's a vibration. You ever turn on a fluorescent light, you hear a hum? It's nothing more than energy vibrating. It can make noise. Space makes noise. The English language was actually created to make certain words have certain vibrations which can affect you in certain ways. You just think it's crazy because you don't practice these things, you don't learn these things, you don't know about these things. But there's always hidden in plain sight meetings. That's why when you sign your name, this sin and sign. That's why when they tell you that you have to sign in cursive, well, there's curse and cursive. And that's why they always make sure you have the correct spelling, because there's spells in spelling. Majority of people are going to laugh at that because they're going to say, oh, that's just funny. Well, if you even think about the, th the fact that you are a piece of corporate property and it's based on admiralty law, law of the sea, I've used this example before, how they use words and meanings. Well, you get your money from a bank. You could find banks on either side of a river. A river flows to the sea. Another word for flow is current, current sea. That is money or cash flow. That's why you're always drowning in debt. That's why your house is underwater. That's why there are so many different water references you're just staying afloat. It's hidden in plain sight because you won't pay attention to it. And if you want to base it on, well, it sounds crazy, well, then get yourself one of these. Get yourself one of these. Probably upside, right side up is the best way I would recommend reading it. And learn. Because if you're basing it just on ignorance, then how can you make an argument? Because it doesn't sound right? Well, just imagine if I had a time machine and I went back to the 1400s and told people that I can have a, a little tiny screen in front of me and my image will show up and I could talk to anybody around the world and they'll be able to hear me. Well, guess what? They'll say you're crazy. Or I tell them, yeah, I just hop in my, medical, my metal vehicle and just hit a button and it shoots me wherever I want to go. Or I can jump into another type of metal vehicle and it takes me into the air and flies me anywhere I want to go. Wouldn't they think that's crazy? Crazy is just information you haven't learned or technology we haven't reached yet and we're living in old technology run by governments and corporations that are here to steal from you and that is why if you are a police officer or you're a military person or if you know anybody that's a police officer or know anybody who is in the military what do they do they sign they swear an oath who do they swear the oath to do they swear the oath to protect the people of America or do they swear to protect the citizens of the United States hmm people of America which are the free people which don't even exist anymore unless you're very rich and very well connected because you're a citizen that's why when the president speaks or anybody else they don't say to the Americans when they're addressing the people they say these citizens so when you hear something that says my fellow Americans 
He's not talking about you. He's talking about his other politician buddies, my fellow Americans. He may be looking at you. He may be addressing a crowd, but he's definitely not talking about you. And that's how they get away with things like, for example, when somebody like John Corzine or some other politician gets caught doing something, and even though the people work on the Senate or the House of Representatives or Congress, and they have to look like they're trying to do something to incriminate that person, you're not going to incriminate somebody in the same mafia. So what they do is they change the words, because if you don't know the words, it doesn't matter. So let's say, for example, they take John Corzine or some other politician and they put him in front of Congress and say, you cannot lie to us, because if you lie, it's per perjury and you will be sent to prison. So everybody that's watching it on CNN is going, ooh, they're going to get him now. They're going to catch him red-handed. They change the words, and this shows they're on the same sides, which is why, by the way, we have an American eagle as our symbol. You have an eagle with its wings spread. You have a left wing, and you have a right wing. Hmm, let's see, left wing Democrat, right wing dub, uh, the Republican. They look very stretched apart. Looks like they're on different sides of the spectrum. But whoa, follow in the feathers and the wing, and it brings you to the same entity. In other words, through symbolism, they're telling you that even though the wings may be spread apart and they have this illusion of separation connected to the same entity. So if they ask a question, let's say a politician was caught stealing money. And they want to look like they're doing their job, the Congress, because, you know, they can't just not address it because the people would pull out their pitchforks and their torches and they'd go and throw another revolution, which is something we should do, but I always say do peacefully. So they're going to say something like, instead of saying, well, let's say what they will say. They will ask a question that they know that he will give the truthful answer to even though people won't understand it or comprehend it, because to understand means you stand under authority. Again, legalese. They will ask him a very direct question, which, by the way, you can't lie under oath. You will be perjured, and you will go to jail. So let's say they ask a question, have you ever stolen money from, a, from an American? Let's say he did. And he got caught doing it. And he's swearing under oath to tell the truth or subject to perjury. And the question is asked, have you ever stolen money from Americans? And he turns around and says, no, I have not. Well, guess what? He has told the truth because we're not Americans. We're citizens. So if that person in Congress who is trying to look like he's really chewing them out and trying to get them in trouble, like Ron Paul does and all these others that make you seem like they're on your side, they would word it like this. Have you ever stolen from a U.S. citizen? Well, then he's either, he's, in, he's trapped then, because then he's either going to lie, and then he's creating perjury, or he's going to have to admit, yes, I have. But that's the difference between not knowing what an American is and not knowing what a U.S. citizen is. Now you do. So, when it comes to things like law, law is an invitation. Let's say you're walking down the street. Somebody just comes up to you that you don't know and says, I would like for you to give me $1,000. Would you give it to him? Some of you might. It might be a nice thing to think, oh, well, I got so much money, I'll give it to him. But the average person would probably say no. You're not going to sit there and say, oh, this person asked for it, so I better reach in my pocket, better give him the 1000 Now, I'm not saying he has a gun and he's not threatening you. Just asking you, giving you an invitation. Can you give me $1,000? You have the right to say no. In government, they trick you. And that's why I did a video about the whole symbolism between vampires and zombies. Because the zombies are you, because you're, you're legally dead. You're not really dead. You're legally dead. And I have other videos for you to watch for that. So you're considered a zombie. So all those zombie movies, they're making fun of you. And they're the vampires. Because if you know anything about vampires, the tradition and the story behind vampires, and they represent the elitist people, is that a vampire has to be invited into your house. Now, if some vampire was trying to get into your house, they're not going to knock on the door, you answer it, and say, Hi, I'm a vampire. Can you let me in so I can kill you? Well, nobody would do it unless they had a suicide wish. So in other words, if you open the door and somebody looked like a vampire and said they're a vampire and said, if you invite me in, I can come in and kill you, you're going to slam the door. 
But if you open that door and say, hi, I'm a police officer. I need to check your house because I was told there was a criminal and I need to save you and check. Can I come in? And you say yes. Well, you volunteered. You were tricked into letting him in. You've technically invited him. Now he can kill you. It's the same thing with the government. It's the, the Constitution works because it's the consent of the governed. And they trick you by committing fraud, lying to you, and omitting the truth, and getting you to subject your own self, in other words, have voluntary servitude, to leave your country of America, betray your country of America, and join a corporation located in the 20 to 10 square mile radius of the District of Columbia with a name called the United States. That is why when people talk about, like, for example, President Obama, and they talk about the fact that he may not have a birth certificate, it's irrelevant, and I'll explain why. Let's say you are the owner of the McDonald's franchise. Let's say you started it, you lived in New York, you decided one day I'm going to create a, a company called McDonald's. Started in New York. It got so well that it went all over the world. Franchises, just like states, are franchises of the corporation. That's all they are. It's a corporation. It's expanded franchises. They're run by a president of that corporation. You're the owner. You can also be the president, or you can even hire a president, which is why banks hire presidents, because presidents run corporations, kings run countries. And banks own the kings, and the Vatican's control the banks. Going up and up and up. So, you're the owner of... McDonald's and you open up a new store in let's just say the Ukraine it's never been there before you're opening up a McDonald's for the first time in Ukraine and you need a president to run that district's corporation of McDonald's does it have to be a person that lives in the Ukraine as, or is or a Ukraine citizen or can it be anybody you want because it's your business you can decide who goes and works there what do you think it is doesn't have to be a person that's a Ukraine citizen just because it happens to be in Ukraine. There could be a person that comes from France that could speak their language who is more qualified. Can he be the president of that corporation or that section? Of course he can. So the fact that even if, if Obama does not have a U.S. birth certificate is irrelevant because he's part of a corporation that has owners, and those owners are the banks. So now you know why the banks are taking up all this property. And now you know why they're cre allowing a foreign bank known as the Federal Reserve to lend us money because they only lend the principal. Remember when I talked about that? So that debt is nothing more than money that they borrow. If you paid it back 100%, you'd still owe the, pro the interest, which they do not make. So when they talk about the debt ceiling and the fiscal cliff, they're using fear and your ignorance to make you agree to them because it's your consent if you're allowing it. So we're responsible for our own debts because we don't know what's going on. But now you do. That when they scare you into thinking, oh, we need this money, the fiscal cliff, we're getting to that debt ceiling. What they're saying is, we're if you let this debt ceiling happen, it's going to expose the fraud and our game is over. We need to scare you so you'll say we need more money. And all you're doing is paying off the last principal's interest. So you're borrowing more money and owing even more. The problem with that scheme is it cannot last forever. Unless you think paying a million dollars for bread is worth it. Because eventually, as it goes higher and higher, things become more and more expensive. And we also print more money, which loses the value. That's why since the Federal Reserve opened in 1914, we have lost about 90 to 95 percent of our purchasing power. It's time people wake up. And this is why the last real president that we had was John F. Kennedy. You might want to look up the following, and I would suggest getting a pen and paper. So pause this if you don't have one. Executive Order 11110. Four ones and an O. John F. Kennedy was going to have our country, our U.S. Mint, create our own money, which would make sense. Why borrow it from a foreign bank, which we have to pay interest on, when we could just make it ourselves? Makes sense. We make our own coins. U.S. Mint manufactures nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars, dollars. They used to have gold in them. Then they used to have silver in them. Now they have neither. But we could still make them. And just coincidentally, I'm sure, just like Lincoln, I'm sure he was just coincidentally just happened to be murdered a little bit after that. 
and there hasn't been a real president since. In other words, get out of line, we'll take care of you. Just like if you're working for McDonald's, you're working for that corporation, and you don't do what they tell you, in other words, you start pocketing the money that you get at the cash register, or you start selling your own hamburger, guess what? They can fire you. You're part of a corporation and don't even know it. So look at your driver's license, look at your birth certificate, look at your whatever money you've ever borrowed in your lifetime or whatever contracts you've ever signed. That name that you think is you is your corporate name. And you're consenting through your silence. Involunt it's volunteering consent, which under the 13th Amendment means you're a legal slave and they can do whatever they want to you. And that's why they create law after law that are not things that infringe on anybody's rights like growing cannabis in your backyard or giving food to a homeless person or smoking a plant that was created by God or whatever you believe in. They make that illegal, throw you in jail. Now, 13th Amendment doesn't apply to you. You're a legal slave. And what they do is they say, well, they make it like it's almost like a, a benefit. When you're in jail, they say, well, you can either be in your jail cell, let's say 23 hours a day and do nothing or you can work and be productive, and we'll even pay you a little bit, maybe a dollar a week. And you'll think, wow, that's a great thing, because I'm so, I've been here 20 years, and I'm so sick of seeing the same walls 23 hours a day, and I'm going crazy, and they're controlling everything. But wow, I can get out a couple of extra hours and do something productive and do something different? Hell yeah, where do I sign up? Slave labor. And we're sitting around worrying about Britney Spears and Miley Cyrus and Duck Dynasty and the Super Bowl and every other divide and conquer they can think of. And that's why politicians, they talk about gay marriage, abortion, welfare, uh, all, all kind of trivial r racial things. I'm not saying trivial that they're not important, but they're the way to divide and conquer. Because if you talk about race, you'll have one race here that's going to be mad at another race here. Divide and conquer. You talk about abortions. You have people for abortions, people against abortions. Clash. If you talk about welfare, people that think it's well-deserved, people that think that they're pay taking advantage of it. Clash. In other words, the way to conquer an enemy even greater than yourself is if you get them to fight amongst themselves, you can easily overtake them. It's the oldest trick in the book, and it still works to this day. So I think I've covered enough in this video. This is an hour-long video, but it's well worth it. And I'm sure if you've listened this far, you have definitely thought it was eye-awakening. And this is just a bit of the information that I could provide. And this is just coming from a regular person that decided one day to stop worrying about this. So when people ask, why am I wearing this? I've said it before and I'll say it again, especially for the new people. I wear this as a reminder to remind me of what used to be important for me. So every time I make a video and I see this hat, it reminds me of what I used to care about. This is my reminder to never let go of remembering your past. Because if you, if you fail to research history, you're doomed to repeat it. And this is how they're controlling you. And this is how politicians get away with all the things they get away with. Because the very people that are sitting there in the Congress trying to you know, intimidate these people to put on a good show... That's why they use acts and codes, because in, where, where else can you find an act? How about a play? Where else can you find a code? Well, how about a coded message in times of war? You have to decode? These are not accidents. These are not coincidences. If you want to believe it, then you either don't care or you're part of their system. And that's why, like I said, you'll see a lot of thumbs down and hatred in videos like this when all I've done is give out free information of years of research that can easily be verified. If you appreciate this, I want you to say in the comments section just something ridiculously stupid. Just say, I like cheese. Don't make that your only comment because otherwise people are going to think you're weird. But make a comment of whatever you have to say and at the end of your comment say, oh, by the way, I like cheese. Just so I know you watch the whole entire thing. And some people will say, oh, an hour long. How can you watch that? Well, you could watch a two-hour movie in the movie theater that will do nothing but dumb you down might keep you entertained you know nero fiddled while rome burned it's very easy that's why the romans had the Colosseum, and at one point it was free to the people 24 hours a day seven days a week you keep the people distracted and entertained you could steal everything from right underneath their feet they won't even notice and that's what's happening today 
And as of now, we still have the freedom and liberties to be able to speak our minds. So yes, we may be better off than some other people on the planet. But that doesn't mean, one, that can't change. And two, well, that's all that matters. It can change. And it doesn't mean it can't get worse. Don't be comfortable. Because you ask anybody that's lived through the Great Depression or lived through World War II and see the progression of how we've changed, not for the better, but for the worse, you'll know that they slowly, progressively change things. So if you take a little bit at a time, you don't notice. If you have $20 million in a bank account and tomorrow you went to go check your bank account and it said $0, well, you're damn well sure you're going to investigate because you've been stolen. You had your money stolen. But if a criminal decides to take $100 here, $1,000 there, $50 here, you'd probably not even notice it. You might think it was some fee or something that you bought because you buy so many things you don't really pay attention. And then they eventually get away with maybe one or two million of your 20 or 30 million. You may never know it's gone, but they robbed you. That's how governments work throughout the world. So a lot of what I talk about has to do with the United States Corporation because this is where I live. This is what I know best. It's going to be different where you live, but it's primarily the same. At least when it comes to admiralty law and the uh, law of the church, uh, canon law. I highly suggest you check those things out and educate yourself. Unless you like being a part of the system. And this is why they give you welfare. This is why they give you health benefits. This is why they protect you with homeland security. Fear equals control. And if you need them, they will provide for you. And that's why as bad as slavery is, and I know slavery, whether it's blacks, whether it was the Jews, whether it was whatever race at one particular point in history that was slaves, it's bad. But if you think about it, a slave had to be taken care of. Because if you put your TV, which is your property, out in the rain, it will get destroyed. So slave was a piece of property. And if you wanted it to be productive, you couldn't let it get sick and die. So you had to give it some sort of food. You had to give it some sort of clothing. You had to give it some sort of shelter. You had to give them some sort of security. These cost money. So they were provided for. They've changed us from slaves that were chained at one point to slaves that are free to walk around to have the illusion of choice. That's why they make you vote, Democrat or Republican. Left wing, right wing. What they're saying is, would you like the left wing president who is part of a corrupt system and will have certain points of views you may like? Or would you like the Republicans on the right side that have different points of views but are still connected to the same entity and are still going to rob you blind take your pick that's basically like saying which of these hands would you like to choose to punch you in the face with would you like me to punch you in the face with this hand or would you like me to punch you in the face with this hand well isn't that a choice doesn't make it good so in a true free society the choices are infinite and what we have to understand is this original country tried to be founded on a republic. That is why it says, and to the republic for which it stands. It doesn't say to the democracy. Republic means you decide on what you want to do as long as you are not infringing on the rights of others. In other words, you can't kill them, you can't rob them, you can't injure them. Accidents happen, that's different. But a democracy is mob rule. Let's say there's 10 people on an island. And, well, let's say 11 people are on an island. And they talk about abortion. You're the only woman on the, on the island. And ten others are men. And they decide, through voting, that they decide abortion is perfectly fine. Well, you are the minority. So even if you are 100% against abortions, the murdering of a live entity, in a democratic society, your, your vote does not matter. Because the majority have dictated what you can do. You really think that's a good thing? Is it better than, like, a communist nation? I'm sure it is. Is it better than a dictator? I'm sure it is. But just because something is better does not mean it's good. Prime example. You have two choices. I can beat you to death, or I can beat you half to death. Illusion of choice, and one is better than the other. 
being beaten half to death is sure a lot better than being beaten to death. But would you sit there and say, yay, I'm only being beaten half to death. What a great day. That's so much better. You see where I'm going with this? I love making these videos because I make a stand and I'm not a coward like some of these trolls who, if you go on their accounts, I want you to check some of the hatred that I will get from some of these people. Go on their channel, click on their, on their link. You will see many similar things. You will see no videos, you will see no pictures, and you will see nothing that shows that they're doing anything but hatred. They create fake accounts. Some of them get paid by the government to do it. Some people do it because they think it's funny, and some people are just moronic cowards. I show my face because I care, and I don't live in fear. Fear equals control, and fear is a choice. We have all been conditioned to learn fear. Because you could put a baby near a cobra, and it would probably try and pet it. It's not afraid of it. It's when we are, our parents use the goodness of fear to say, stay away from that because it can hurt you. But governments use psychology. They've learned how to get you through your emotions. And that's why when you see any advertisement on the television and watching your television programming, that most of the commercials are limited time offer. Act now. Act fast. Get it while it's hot. Be in the, uh, the beautiful people crowd. Get it while supplies last. Offer ends soon. They want you to think, oh my god, I gotta get it now. I have to use my emotion. You shut off your logical brain of thought and re reason. It's all about emotion. They know how to control you. Fear is the way they do it. They create a problem, cause a reaction, and they come up with the solution. That is just like if you ever watched any gangster movie where there's an, uh, an old man or an old woman running a mom and pop store, sitting there minding their own business, maybe sweeping the floor. And all of a sudden, a bunch of thug gang members come in and start trashing the place. And they go up to that mom and pop and they say, you know what, we're here to protect you. If you want to keep this from ever happening again, all you have to do is just pay us some protection money and we'll stop the people from coming in and destroying your business. We'll protect you. But weren't they the ones that caused the initial problem? So they're protecting you from basically themselves and extorting money from you. Is that any different from any government throughout the world? The question is, why are you allowing it? Now, I can understand why the majority of people allowed it before they got this information from this video and probably, hopefully, many others. It's because they didn't know. You can't fight what you don't know. But now that you know what's going on, and these are things that you can easily verify through your own hard work and dedication. If you're too lazy, you're, all you're going to do is doubt it or even believe in it. Don't spend your whole life believing or disbelieving. Prove somebody wrong or prove somebody right. Do your deal to your own due diligence. I think I've said enough. I can talk forever with this stuff because it means the world to me. You want to get out of the system? No longer comply to a corporation. Alert everybody that you can because the media is not going to do it. They're bought and paid for and regulated by the FCC. Let's see who owns that. That would be the government. Uh, let's see your food, drugs, and water with all the chemicals they put in, is, is basically monitored by the FDA. Ooh, I wonder who, run does, who runs that. That would be the government. You have oil industry, which, you know, every invention over 100 years ago is either obsolete or has so been improved, we wouldn't even recognize something that was made 100 years ago, but yet the gas engine hasn't really changed in over 100 years. Ooh, I wonder who regulates that. I wonder who controls the patents on so many inventions, like from Nikolai Tesla and God knows how many other people that could have changed the world centuries ago. I wonder who controls that. You get in the picture? If you want to be compliant, then you're part of the problem, and you have no right to complain. But if we want to get out of the system, we all have to say, I no longer comply. I no longer want your invitation. Because when you go to court, they're inviting you over. When you go, you are voluntary, voluntarily serving. So remember when I talked about earlier in this program about the person who asked you for the $1,000? You don't have to give it to them. But if you do, that's your choice. 
So when a cop pulls you over or you get an invitation from a court to appear in a court, it's like the guy asking you for a thousand dollars. The problem is that because no one cares or no one knows about it, they allow cops and other p politicians to steal your home, throw you out of your house, take what's yours. And we think that's just the way it is. Be careful what you wish for, you may get it. So if you appreciate this, I'm asking you to send this message out, to share it, and to study and become independent. That's one of the reasons why I started getting into the business of making, not only making, but showing people how to make organic products on your own, your own organic soaps, your own organic toothpastes, your own organic shampoos. Because the less dependent you are on the government, the less control they have over you. And they sure as hell don't want you to be an independent free thinker with knowledge. They want you an ignorant, lazy, stupid follower slave. Is that what you want to be? It's your choice. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to have your trolls spayed or neutered. This is Chris, Barnon 11970, saying thank you for watching. And I love you all. And peace to all of my people. Have a great night.